What's happening? It's Shane here, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about the engineering degree tier list. This is going to be the updated 2022 version, should be coming out in January, maybe February at the latest. A lot of people commented that they wanted me to come out with these tier lists and these top tens that I do every single year at the beginning of the year rather than, you know, in June or August or anything like that makes a lot of sense to me and so I'm doing this ahead of time. And I'm gonna be doing a lot of new degrees this year. It's going to be a much improved version of last year's list. At this point, I've spent over 100 hours on the college degree ranker, which is available down in the description below, my College 101 course. And it is amazing at this point. I mean, it is just incredible. And that is what I'm gonna be using in this video to help you decide which engineering degree is best for you. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, systems engineering is number one on the list. I don't think I talked about this one last year. This one has about a thousand graduates per year at the bachelor's level. The early career pay is about 72,000 and mid-career pay is gonna be 130,000. So fantastic salary there. Unfortunately, when it comes to the demand, not nearly as good. And I think the reason for that is because systems engineering isn't as well known as a lot of other different types of engineering degrees. Now, systems engineering as a career is getting more and more popular, so I am very bullish on the future of this degree. So the number of jobs that had the keyword systems engineering degree on Indeed and Monster.com were not very high. It was about 127. And so the demand score is 14.51, which is relatively low. But overall, uh, this is still a very good degree. And when it comes to engineering degrees, I'm gonna put this one in B tier. But like I said, this could be an underrated degree, uh, could be a dark horse candidate, and I could see this one getting higher in the future. Next on the list is gonna be a relatively rare one. Uh, you do see about a thousand graduates per year, and that is gonna be agricultural engineering. A uh, very specific, very niche degree. Uh, when it comes to engineering degrees, you really don't need to get too specific with them because they're already so good on their own that you don't need to specialize as much. But you see a early career pay of $59,000 a year and mid-career is gonna be 98,000. Now I'm not gonna get too far into the details on this because the video would just run too long and there's way too many degrees for us to go over. Uh, but basically the demand score is about 48. That's not great, but it's also not horrible. So yeah, when it comes to engineering degrees, this one is going into D tier. Next one on the list is going to be software engineering, one of the best overall degrees. Early career pay is gonna be 69,000 a year. Mid-career pay is gonna be 112,000. And the demand score is absolutely ridiculous at 127. That is the highest demand on the entire list for engineering degrees. So yeah, this is a fantastic one. Clearly, this one goes in S tier. Next one on the list is going to be aerospace engineering. Uh, aerospace, aeronautical industry in general took a huge hit during COVID. And I did say in videos I've made in the past that this is one of those industries that can be a little bit boom or bust, but you're gonna start off about $69,000 per year and mid-career pay is 118,000. There's about 4,000 graduates per year and the demand score came out to be about 100. So yeah, this one's pretty good. Uh, the only problem is, is that it's you know relatively specific. Um, and you're going into an industry that can be boom or bust. And so for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into A tier. Next one on the list is going to be architectural engineering with less than a thousand graduates per year. Very specific, very niche degree. Early career pay 61,000, mid-career pay is 97,000 a year. That is relatively low pay for an engineering degree. The demand score is pretty good at about 98. However, overall, because of the fact that it is so specific and the pay is a little bit low, when you're comparing it to other engineering degrees, it's not that great. It's not horrible either. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and put it into D tier. Next one on the list is going to be biomedical engineering. This one has almost 7,000 graduates per year. And this is one that I put as a dark horse candidate when I made my very first video on engineering a few years back. And ever since then, the more I've studied it, the more I've looked into it, the statistics, the trends, et cetera, it does seem to be on an upward trajectory. Now, one thing that really stands out about this one is the meaning score is much higher than other types of engineering degrees. So it's 71%, whereas most engineering degrees are usually in the 50s. So that means people who like biomedical engineering 
really like biomedical engineering. And it also means that you're likely going to end up in a career that is extremely meaningful. And so over a long period of time, you're probably going to be a little bit happier with it. So the early career pay is going to be 66,000 and mid career is about 114,000. So yeah, this one pretty solid. If you're somebody who is interested in kind of the combination of like health and engineering, you know, combined together, uh, this is a good one for you to look into. I'm going to go ahead and put it into B tier. The only reason it isn't higher is because again, it's just so specific. Uh, a lot of the time, if you get like a mechanical engineering degrees, you can still apply to the, a lot of the same jobs as people with biomedical engineering degrees. And so especially when it comes to engineering degrees, I think flexibility is key. Next one on the list at about 10,000 graduates per year is going to be chemical engineering. One of the highest paying engineering degrees, early career pay starts off around 72,000 a year, mid career pay is 127,000. Also has pretty good demand at about 101. So yeah, this is a pretty good one. Um, doesn't quite make it into S tier status just because it doesn't pop off the page, but very solid choice overall. Uh, I'm gonna put this one into A tier. Next one on the list is going to be civil engineering with about 13,000 graduates per year. This one also has a relatively high meaning score. That's kind of one of the outliers with this one. It's about 65%. Early career pays 60,000 a year. Mid career pays about 102,000, which is good when you compare it to all types of degrees, but for engineering degrees specifically, it's not all that impressive. So yeah, again, another very solid choice. Doesn't pop off the page. I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into B tier. Computer engineering is gonna be next, and this one has about 7,000 graduates per year. Start off about $72,000 a year, and mid-career pay is gonna be about 120,000. This one has a very good demand score as well at about 107. So basically everywhere you look, really good pay, really good demand, you're going into an industry that tends to also not only just pay you really well, but you get bonuses, you get stock options, you get really good benefits, tons of opportunity in the technology industry. So yeah, computer engineering, another one that is clearly S tier. Next one on the list is going to be electrical engineering. Interestingly enough, almost identical stats, just slightly lower uh, than computer engineering everywhere you look. So early career pay is gonna be 70,000 a year, mid career pay is 119,000, so you know slightly lower. However, the demand score is gonna be just a little bit higher. And the great thing about electrical engineering is it isn't as specific as computer engineering, so you're gonna have a lot more flexibility. So electrical engineering is another one where I'm gonna actually put this one into S tier. The next one on the list is going to be environmental engineering. Now, when it comes to the pay, this one is going to be uh, relatively low when you compare it to other types of engineering degrees. Early career pay is 58,000, mid career pay is about $100,000 per year. Now, when it comes to the demand, uh, relatively good. The demand score is about 100, and also the meaning is relatively good as well, about 63%. So if you compare this to like all degrees, pretty good, but when it's on a list of other engineering degrees, degrees, uh, the highest I can put it is going to be C tier. Next one on the list is going to be industrial engineering. Uh, this is one of my favorite ones because it's so flexible. It's basically like business combined with engineering. So you're gonna start off about $67,000 a year. Mid-career pay is 110,000. And then the demand score here is gonna be 101, which is pretty good as well. And then on top of that, like I said, it's very flexible. And for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one into A tier. Next one on the list is going to be marine engineering. And this one is very similar to environmental engineering where you know it has some benefits here and there, but uh, the big reason why it's not gonna make it into the higher tiers is because it's just too specific, too niche. So your early career pay is gonna be about $72,000 a year. Mid career pay is gonna be about 123,000. But the demand score is relatively low, especially for an engineering degree, it's 37. And so you've got pretty good pay, but unfortunately demand is relatively low. And then on top of that, it's not very flexible. And so for that reason, I'm gonna have to put this one into C tier. 
Next one on the list with about 1500 graduates per year is going to be materials engineering. Now this one is pretty mediocre across the board. Uh, especially when you're comparing it to other engineering degrees. Early career pays 69,000, mid career pays 106,000. The demand score is 53. The meaning score is relatively low at 47. It's also not a super flexible degree either. And so, like I said, across the board, it's either you know middle or even below average. But with that being said, very cool. A lot of cool stuff is coming out. Uh, that are applications of materials engineering. You know, there's material coming out, for instance, where it can keep your house cool without even using air conditioning, which is super cool. But yeah, overall, you know, on this list, I have to put it in D tier. Next one on the list is going to be mechanical engineering, a very flexible degree. That's the biggest positive about mechanical. Also one of the most common engineering degrees, if not the most common at 32,000 graduates per year. And one of the big things about having a lot of graduates is it's almost like the degree itself has its own brand name. And if you know anything about brand names with companies and that sort of thing, you know, you probably think it's not all that important, but it actually makes a huge difference. If somebody sees a mechanical engineering degree and then they see some random degree, like actually the next one we're gonna talk about the, on the list, which is, uh, you know, mechatronics, um, a lot of the time they recognize mechanical engineering. They've probably hired people with a mechanical engineering degree. They've worked with people with this degree. And so they sort of have some familiarity with it. They kind of know what they're gonna get. But when it comes to these very specific, very niche degrees uh, where there's maybe not a lot of graduates, it could be just as good, maybe even better in terms of the education you get. You could be much more knowledgeable on certain things. But unfortunately, just because of the fact that people don't recognize the degree, a lot of the time they're gonna go with with the one that they know and recognize. But with that being said, very solid stats across the board for mechanical engineering. Early career pay is 66,000, mid career pay is 110,000 a year. The demand score is super solid at 105, and it's a very flexible degree. So yeah, this one is going to go into A tier. The next one on the list, the one I just mentioned was mechatronics engineering. And this is a super cool, relatively new type of engineering that focuses on robots. So basically it's kind of a combination of mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, electronics engineering, as well as robotics. Super, super cool degree a lot of great things you can do with it. Um, not nearly as well known as some of the other ones. However, with the statistics I've looked up on it, it is extremely solid. And so for that reason, I'm gonna just barely, barely put it into A tier. It just squeaks into A tier. Next one on the list is going to be most engineering technology degrees. It seems like every different degree type, whether you're talking about business degrees, science degrees, engineering degrees, et cetera, has these sort of like grifter type degrees that these schools that you know wanna make way too much money for the value that they're giving. A lot of these for-profit schools, for instance, come up with uh, to incentivize students to enroll in these different fields and they sound really good, right? Like, oh, engineering technology, that sounds amazing, but engineering technology degrees are not technically engineering degrees. It is a, it's not even a scheme per se, it's... So a really good example of this is going to be construction engineering technology. So first of all, construction engineering, uh, very, very specific on its own. Uh, and then construction engineering technology is even more specific. So that's a big problem right off the bat. It's not a very flexible degree. On top of that, when you compare it to other engineering degrees and you look at how much they're making, you know, early career pay is 52,000 a year, mid career pay is 82,000. Not great compared to engineering degrees. And then when you look at the demand score, it's even lower, right? The demand score here is the lowest on the entire list at 2.97. So some of these engineering technology degrees can be all right but I want you to know because so many people get confused by this that they are not real engineering degrees. So yeah, these are gonna go into F tier. Next one on the list is going to be network engineering. For this one, uh, relatively low pay for an engineering degree, starting off at 56,000 a year and mid-career pay is 90,000. However, the demand score is really good at a solid 100. So for that reason, this one is going to go into C tier. 
Next one on the list is going to be nuclear engineering, a relatively rare one, only about 500 graduates per year. Now this one is in the energy industry, which again can be extremely up and down, extremely boom or bust. And we saw during you know everything that happened the last few years, the energy industry did take a huge hit. But with that being said, uh, pretty good pay here, 72,000 starting out, 122,000 mid-career. The demand score here is on the slightly lower side at 40. I am a big fan of nuclear engineering though, and it does have a relatively high meaning score at about 63%. But there's so many other factors that go into the energy industry that we simply cannot control and we definitely can't predict. Certain governments, for instance, like this type of energy, other governments like this type of energy, and they'll you know make regulations against this. But I personally think that nuclear energy is the future. I think 100 years from now, uh, airplanes, cars, etc., are all going to be running on nuclear energy. That's just my opinion, though. So for that reason, this one is going to go into C tier. Next one on the list is going to be petroleum engineering with about 2,000 graduates per year. Now, this is actually the highest paying degree, period. Not just on this list, it's the highest paying degree, period. Yeah, wow. Early career pay, you start off $94,000 a year. Mid-career pay is $176,000. Absolutely ridiculous. However, the demand score is relatively low. It's only about 34. Couple that with it not being a very flexible degree. And the highest I can put this one is going to be B tier. So yeah, hope you're getting a lot of value out of this. Uh, me sharing this project that took me over 100 hours to complete. If you want access to all of it, like I said, for a limited amount of time, I'm doing a discount. You can check that out uh, down in the description. If you haven't done it already, go ahead, gently tap the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video, and I will see you next time.